A very, very good evening, wherever you might be in the cricket-loving world, from La Paz to Montevideo to Manila to downtown Hong Kong, wherever the world of cricket finds you tonight via the interweb. Welcome to Two Full Tossers, proudly presented tonight for the very first time by the new cricket sensation, the tournament that has caught the imagination of the world, thanks to myself and my fellow host, uh, Alan Committee. It is the thousand that we launched last week that is blowing the hundred out of the water. And Alan Committee, as I say good evening, as I say, gosh, that is a lovely beard. And as I ask you how you are, I have to say we have been inundated. And by inundated, I mean I can count on more than one hand the amount of correspondence we have had from people around the world saying, Dan, Alan, we've always known that you two are visionaries. We've always known that you see generations ahead. You have 2020 vision going forward, and you have seen the future. You know it is the thousand. And between, I mean, let's look. Some of the most exciting cricketers of our generation, Alan Committee. We've had Buta Dipana on the phone. We've had Nick Compton on the phone. Kepler Vessel sent us a fax. The future, Alan Committee, is not the hundred. It is the thousand. The thousand indeed. Good evening to you, Dan Nickel. And that introduction is only half the length of the thousand. Just to give you a sense of how long the game will be. A thousand deliveries per side. Uh, it's an extraordinary concept. Can only have been dreamed up by these two brilliant minds. And, and I say brilliant mind, even though you couldn't remember my name at the beginning of the show. Uh, that was slightly strange. I know it's been a week, but I've missed you too. I suspect what's happened is you've been up till 3 or 4 a.m. every morning, delighting in our Olympians, our South African Olympians. Uh, it, what a tremendous week it's been with highs and lows. But we, I, I'm so excited. I'm putting the Tatiana back in my breaststroke. And uh, it's just a joy and a pleasure. Look, I, I, I admit I am uh, I'm a little frazzled, uh, partly because of the excitement about the thousand, which is almost half the length of a Rassi Erasmus video, uh, and <laughs> so it's very appealing uh, for its brevity and its excitement. Yes. Um, but yes. again, I have been up. I have been up. Uh, I have been up watching the Olympics, and we we ranted about it. We raved about it in a in a non raving way last week. But again, it has been another week. A week since we spoke, Alan Committee. A week in which not only not only is there no cricket at the That's Olympics, right. there has not been a word, not a statement from the IOC of apology of saying we made a mistake. We are not producing a show that is showcasing the best of world sport. We've had another week, Alan Committee, where cricket and the Olympics, the chasm, it's basically the space between Inzamamable Huck's bat and the crease as he attempts a quick single, having run one to deep backward square leg. You, you make a fine point. And, you know, the only thing I can put it down to, as I've blamed everything over the last couple of weeks, is Australia. Rugby Australia are obviously at the root of this, and probably Cricket Australia. All of Australia have caused this deep quagmire of disappointment. But because I have back uh, root uh, communication with Rossi Erasmus, I'm uh, able to announce uh, on this Monday evening at three minutes past nine that he will be making a 86-minute video on the exclusion of cricket at uh, the uh, Olympic Games. And once he's put his case forward, I think we know what will happen very shortly thereafter. Uh, Fuff de Klerk will be at the opening ceremony and all things will be as they should be. I say Fuff de Klerk, I mean Fuff du Plessis. Uh, both are interchangeable according to certain British journalists. So that's mm. just fantastic. Indeed. If you are the rugby writer from the Times on your third bottle of inexpensive Chardonnay, we trust you're having a good evening. Uh, all right. So no cricket at the Olympics, which is no, it's devastating. In fact, uh, we were actually we were going to start because we've got a very special guest tonight on the show. We're going to start. We're going to open up right with him immediately. And he was actually we mentioned the Olympics. He broke down in tears. Uh, he just he is so upset about this. Uh, we're going to bring him onto the show very shortly. We're also going to talk in just a moment about the hundred, which is the very poor third cousin of parents who are second cousins to the thousand. But before we jump onto that, it is a highlight not just of this show, Alan Committee. It is a highlight of the global sporting week where That's we right. find out 
who Alan's lost legend is. Uh, you won't tell us just yet because you're a little cloak and dagger that way, but you'll give us a clue, a little sniff in the right direction. Uh, so show us a picture then, Alan. Who is our lost legend this week? So here he is. It's no Lee Barnard. Now, that's a very old picture I hear you saying. Grainy black and white footage of this man. Do you recognize him? I doubt you will. The only clue I can give you, and I perhaps this is too much of a clue, is that he's in fact not a cricket player. But he's obviously, he was heavily involved in the world of cricket. And what a legend. When we, I've brought you many legends over the last 23 weeks. This might be one of the greatest of them all. Um, a tremendous man, wonderful voice. Look at him there. No Lee Barnard. Do you know who he is? Why not type in with your slightly dirty fingernails, stubby fingers into our chat box and tell us if you think you know who that lost legend might be. Ooh, do you know, little uh, little Dan? Do you know who that is? Ooh, is he somewhere between a, an extra in Downton Abbey and a serial killer from the 1870s? Uh, That's right. That be, uh, all right. All right. We've got a, a couple of answers coming in. We will find out just a little later uh, who is correct, who that person is from the, uh, the very back of the archives of the Allen Committee Cricket Collection. While we wait for that, while we wait for our special guest to dry his eyes and mentally compose himself for his debut on Two Full Tossers, uh, we don't watch The 100, uh, which means we haven't seen any of it, uh, which in particular means we haven't seen this. I actually dug it out. Uh, how's, how is this for Quinton de Kock taking a catch in front of, I think this is seventh slip. Let's see if we've got it. Well, you've got it. You've got Jordan now. Oh, my God! Oh! You can't keep him out of the game! Oh! Winton de Kock! Talking about that, imagine it did not go for six on this wicket. Pressure would be on. It would be game one, but it's still on. What a catch, Kepi. He fought, he got away. Oh my goodness. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. You don't see many better catches than that. Oh. No, don't see oh. many better catches. That is Ray Jennings. Chet Jennings like that was. Oh, that was that was shades of Bob Knott. Uh, <laughs> in, uh, in the years gone by. And then three three things I loved about that. Uh, one oh, was Kevin Peterson doing the impression of a 12-year-old at a One Direction concert. Um, Darren Sammy proving that with a great Caribbean accent, you can make absolutely no sense whatsoever and still sound amazing. Amazing. I've got no idea what he said there, but he sounded amazing. Uh, and then Quinton de Kock takes this catch where he's covered the better part of an Imran Tahir wicket celebration to take that catch in front of cover point. And just not fussed at all. I've just taken not the best all. catch you'll see this but year. I'm really, I'm not bothered. Nah, the truth not. is with Quentin de Kock is it's also possible that he didn't know that he's taken the catch and that he will only realize that in weeks to come. And that's also fine. Uh, Taste Brits, one of our loyal fans, uh, saying John T. Fuel. I quite like that. A little bit of John T. Fuel. Yes. Ah. He did raw. Uh, that was brilliant. Look, I've, I, 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 in not watching the hundred, I have caught quite a bit of it, uh, and it's been lovely to see loads of South Africans play. Uh, but also a little disquieting to see so many incredible South Africans not play. And in fact, yeah. our special guest tonight is one of those. He should be playing in the hundred because he's a devastating cricketer. Uh, and we're going to meet him in just a moment. But before we do that, uh, let's go back uh, to the piece of Egyptology you thrust upon us moments ago. Uh, and here we go. It's always a highlight of the week. Who is Alan's lost legend? <laughs> He's no Lee Barnard, but he is the sultry voiced cricket commentator of our youth and the youth of our parents and indeed our grandparents. He is the brilliant, magnificent Charles Fortune. Ah, oh, Charles. Gary right. von Lochrenberg. Well done, you, sir. There he oh. is. That thing towards the end, the lovely little Charles. Is that the, Charles Fortune uh, or Gary von Lochrenberg? It's, it's both, actually, a composite picture provided to us by Google. Now, I've got to tell you two things you wouldn't have known about Charles Fortune. I didn't in doing some reading about him earlier tonight. The one is 
Back in 1956 and 57 on the England tour of South Africa, he was the first person in the media to measure a batsman's progress in terms of balls faced rather than minutes at the crease, which of course subsequently became the way of measuring that standard. Isn't that interesting? He recognized that as being very important. And then this lovely little quote, which he gave um, at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, uh, and he was talking to some of the media, and he said, others could give a minute by minute score, but I felt that it was up to me to try and tempt housewives to listen to cricket so that they could pass on their enthusiasm to their sons. A lovely bit of sexism there from Charles Fortune. <laughs> as he explained why he would describe pigeons and their mating habits and often forget the vital information around the number of deliveries bold. But we love him. He's no Lee Barnard. He is the magnificent Charles Fortune. Fortune. That's a great one. Well played, Alan Kamizzi. Uh, so him, him and Henry Blofeld, and there were a couple I remember from my youth of Zimbabwean radio commentators, where you'd listen enthralled because the commentary was beautiful. You had absolutely no idea what was happening in the cricket, no, but the commentary no. was fabulous. Unbelievable. And in fact, interesting you used to say, uh, Henry Bellofeld and some of the reading I said today, they uh, loved working alongside Charles Fortune. They did so on a number of occasions, first on radio and then much later uh, on television. And they were thrilled and delighted to be in each other's company, which thrills and delights me and no doubt you too. A veritable double act of some <laughs> brilliance. Indeed it does. Well, speaking of thrill and delight, our guest tonight specializes in both. He has a first-class average of 62. What? He is an extraordinary striker of the cricket ball. He terrifies bowlers. We've only seen a glimpse of him thus far in international cricket, but there is much more to see of him. We are thrilled and delighted to have him on the show tonight Coming to us all the way from Cape Town, where I think it's currently March, a very warm welcome to Kyle Varey! Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, that's a lot of red hair. Whoa! Oh, that is a lot. Whoa! Ah. Just had my hair shaved. It could have been a lot more. <laughs> welcome welcome to the show welcome home you've uh, you've just had a a, a a bubbly burst in the caribbean and ireland uh how was the tour and uh, how difficult was it off the field as much as it was on the field kyle yeah i think um firstly thanks for having me uh yeah it was a, a really long tour firstly um yeah i think it was just under two months uh so that that was quite long but i think yeah, just uh, getting able to experience some different sort of cultures, even though you can't really leave leave the hotel. It was, it was really nice. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the West Indies. Uh, like I said, you can't really get out, but you just sort of get the, the feel for what type of people there are and stuff. Uh, and yeah, and then Ireland was also really cool. Um, but yeah, off the field, I think it was, it was quite challenging. I think a lot of guys struggled uh, mentally just from, you know, being in the bubble, uh, you sort of limited in terms of, of your movements and stuff. It does get quite challenging. Um, but yeah, overall, a, a really good experience and, and grateful that I could be a part of it. You're, you're one of the, the younger players, the newer players in the squad, which means, unfortunately, you get some of the jobs that aren't quite so cool. And we do our research. This is a, a high-end, analytical, uh, and very statistically-based cricket show, uh, as you know. And so having made some calls, I understand, Kyle, and you have my sympathy. I'm, I'm actually reaching out and giving you a virtual hug of consolation. <laughs> I believe that one of your jobs as one of the new members of the team at the Bubble, which was, of course, a 17-star golf resort on the beach <laughs> in the Caribbean, was to gently massage coconut oil into Captain Dean Elgar and uh, the, uh, uh, the somewhat hirsute and bushy shoulders of our little Portuguese leader. Uh. If that was true, I probably would have asked if I could leave the trip straight away, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, no, very fortunate not to have to uh, actually do that job. Oh. Tell me, since you were in the bubble in both those countries, in, yes. normally I'm sure you would often room with someone. Did you guys all have your own rooms? Or were you kind of cooped up with a player over all those months that would have been made it even more difficult, I guess? I think that would have been really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we've, yeah, I think obviously due to COVID protocols or whatever it is, uh, we get our own rooms. Um, it's nice at times, you do get a bit lonely, but I think <laughs> two months sharing a room with someone would uh, yeah, not be ideal. So fortunately we get to stay on our own, which is, 
which is pretty cool. If if you'd had to, if Go times on. were tough and uh, let's say bizarrely uh, there wasn't much money in cricket South Africa, uh, and you had to share a room, uh, who would be the best person? Yeah, oh, yeah, well, I'll take him. He'll be great. And he'd be the person going. You know what? Actually, I'm going to swim home. I cannot take this. I'm swimming back to Cape Town from Jamaica. I cannot share a room with this person. Just between the three of us, Kyle. Go on, tell us. I think that the person that I wouldn't want to share a room with is definitely Buren Hendricks. Um, yeah, he's quite a quite a lazy guy. Just sort of yeah gets on with his own business. He loves his PlayStation as well. Um, so you could yeah probably spend hours and hours playing PlayStation. So I'd never get able to sleep. Um, so he's probably the one person I wouldn't want to be with. I think someone that would be quite interesting to be with would probably be Quinny. Um, yeah, I think just, I don't know if it would be good or bad, but I think just experiencing uh, what he sort of does in his free time and stuff would be really interesting to to witness. So. Yeah, I would. I think I'd quite enjoy that, to be honest with you. Don't know if it would be would end up being any good, but uh, definitely something that I'd be willing to try. <laughs> I'd be terrific. I mean, he he was brilliant on the tour. He bounced back. His cricket was amazing. Mm. But even his cricket, Kyle, couldn't touch the quality of his post match interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest with you. I think uh, most of us, when he gets man of the match or man of the series or whatever he has to speak, I think most of us get quite excited. Uh, just so we get to get to hear what gold he's got for us on, on that particular occasion. I think that's true of all the cricketing public around the world. Yeah, no, there's been some, especially I think on this trip, there was a, this last trip, there was a, some, some golden moments. So, yeah, I know he offers a lot of value, especially in those, uh, those post-match interviews. <laughs> So oh, well. this extraordinary um, uh, domestic uh, average that old Dan was throwing out there earlier and your unbelievable skill and everyone was calling, get Kyle in the side, get Kyle in the side. Tell us a little bit, what was that step like from domestic to international? I think firstly, it's obviously I've, I've seen a lot of people like saying, no, you need to play, you need to play. So I think before you even make a debut or you get into the side, you sort of feel a lot of pressure. Um, so that's like the first thing that I sort of had to deal with when I did get a call up, uh, making my debut and stuff. I think the first thing that's sort of on my mind is just everyone's been saying you need to get an opportunity. Now you've got it now. <laughs> Don't look like a fool and, and be rubbish. So you got to deal with that. Um, but yeah, in terms of the step up skill wise and stuff, um, it, it is quite a jump. I think, I think domestically we've got a lot of skilled cricketers and you get challenged um, quite well. But I think something that sort of stood out for me um, it was just the intensity, um, yeah, just the level of energy and stuff. I think um, domestic level, like I said, the skill and stuff, it's, it's really good. But I think you really get tested. Um, just the intensity, you know, international cricket, you feel like you don't really get a second to um, sort of relax and take a breather. It's, it's like 100% all the time. So, yeah, for me, that's sort of the biggest thing that I sort of experienced um, in making this step up. You got to play uh, the Test Series. It was lovely to see you there. We're going to see a lot more of you in Test Cricket. And uh, we saw a little bit of you over in Ireland. I'm not so much interested in what happened on the field. Though. What was it like just arriving in Ireland and everybody, the entire Irish public, thinking, oh, my God, here's this tanned, bronzed Irish god. Because you <laughs> look like an Irishman, but you're also the most tanned person who looks like an Irishman who's probably ever existed. Uh, I'll be honest with you, for the probably the whole West India's trip um, leading up to the island trip, every day someone reminded me that, uh, you know, in a couple of weeks time, we're going to be going to your homeland. It's going to be, you're going to be seeing your people. Uh, it's going to be amazing. And then to be honest, when we got there, obviously redheads, it's pretty, I don't know, there's quite a lot of them in Ireland as well. And that's literally what the guy said. They said, geez, I've never seen a, a ginger that's as tanned as me. I mean, like with all the respect, the, you're not getting a lot of sun there and stuff. So the guys were amazed. I looked like I'd been yeah, sitting in the sun for years. It was actually actually a, a joke that was going around for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a newbie in the side, how many people, and you can be honest again with us because this is a, this is a circle of trust, an inner circle, if you will. Um, how many people in the side, in the management, uh, in the bigger entourage, uh, actually pronounce your surname correctly? Does anybody actually get it right? Because we know the commentators never, they don't even come close. So no, I think I think with all due respect to the commentator, I think my name has changed probably fifty times over the past past couple of years. Uh, no, they they seem to all have it. I remember sort of 
um, for the Cobras as are now stepping into the national team. The first uh, couple of team meetings, um, they call your name out and you sort of wait to hear how they're going to say it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, everyone seems to have got their, got their head around it now, so, so they're all good. Has, has it ever been a case where they call out a name and you're thinking, that might be me, but, but I'm not 100% sure? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I, think, I think it's such a, such a unique surname that even if they get it completely wrong, you still have a bit of an idea that they're, they're talking about you. So, no, fortunately, that hasn't happened. So hey, actually, was, Alan, sorry, I, Alan and I were trying to work this out. Is it really Norwegian? Yeah. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I, I must be honest with you, I've been asked a lot to sort of say what nationality it is. And the honest truth is, I actually don't know. I really don't know. In Norwegian it but is. Say that. No, I, that's, that's the best one I've heard. I'll take that. It's I'll using that. all the letters in the alphabet, which is nice. And and unnecessarily, if I might add. <laughs> and it's, that's good. Too many N's. Too many, there's a Y in there for no reason. An E in the no. wrong way. Great. There's a lot of letters you can skip out if you, <laughs> that's if you want to. I'm, actually, I'm, actually, I'm, on Wikipedia, I'm on Wikipedia now, and I didn't even know this, but uh, uh, we, uh, we know he's Kyle, but actually the two middle names are Ole Gunnar. So <laughs> we've got them sorted out. I support Manchester United, so that's... Uh, oh! I'll take that. Oh. I'm happy with that. Where was Paul Scholes nine months before you were born? Yes. Uh, that's a very good question. I have asked my mother the same uh, same thing a couple of times, to be honest with you. <laughs> On holiday in Pretoria. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so for someone with this unbelievably attacking brand of cricket and great skill set, who your who your influences and idols growing up uh, as you were making your way into the world of cricket? Who other tickled your fans? Other, uh, other than us, obviously. No, it's obviously yeah. You two, firstly, and then thirdly, <laughs> um, I think like anyone sort of my age growing up. Um, at that time, Jacques Callas was obviously the main main sort of South African superstar. Um, so yeah, I always looked up to him. And then sort of growing up, um, as A.B. de Villiers sort of started making his way into the team, he was sort of the the guy that I, I followed quite a lot and, and really looked up to. So those are probably the two guys of my sort of um, childhood and sort of growing up days that I really um, looked towards. And, and yeah, I just really enjoyed watching watching them, them do what they do. Interesting question here from Gary van Lochenberg, the former Bull and Scrum half, who uses up his weekly data allocation every Monday to watch us on the show. Uh, why did you choose Weinberg Boys High ahead of Westerford High at the time? Which I think he's saying, why did you choose Jacques Cullis over Alan Committee? Ah, it's a good question. Um, to be honest with you, I was actually actually sort of chose Rondebosch. I was going to go to Rondebosch. Um, and then, yeah, we are probably, I don't know, I don't want to say Locked. a couple of weeks, maybe, yeah, maybe a, a month or so before uh, school started, grade eight. Um, I got the Jacques Allen scholarship to go to Weinberg, so that's that's what took me there. So, yeah, but I'm I'm really happy it turned out the way it did. Um, I loved my time there. I uh, think loved it more than if I had gone to Westerford. So, really happy with that decision and how it worked out. We are now giving out the Ferran Behardin uh, scholarship from Westerford. So, uh, again. Mm -hmm. You can always rethink that. I don't know how your is. <laughs> don't laugh. These are not things to laugh at. No, this so. is. Uh, this, please, Kyle, please take it seriously. This goes, Ooh. and Al and I are part of the selection committee. Uh, we help to find the best 12th man uh, yep. in junior cricket, and <laughs> off we send him uh, to become actually captain and principal of Westerford uh, at the uh. same time. Um, so it's a wonderful way. Yeah, nobody's accepted it yet, but it is Not a one, wonderful, yeah. wonderful accolade. <laughs> What's that? so far? The career is very young. Uh, you've had some extraordinary performances. I that first class double hundred. Uh, there are still fast bowlers in therapy. We've seen some of your one day yeah. games just explosive. Uh, often, though, I'm fascinated with this question because we, we sometimes get the answer we're not expecting. We think this must be your best performance ever. And it turns out, no, it's something completely different. So what is the game you remember, the performance you remember with most fondness? Uh, to be honest, um, my one day debut against Australia, um, that's sort of the one that, that comes to mind for me. Um, yeah, it was it was at Paul just before COVID sort of hit. Uh, so I was fortunate to have my family and stuff there, which was was really special. And then, yeah, I remember I think I batted for that game, four or five, and we were 
Yeah, I don't want to lie, but I think we're maybe like 30 for three or, or something like that in the power play. That sounds um, real. That sounds possible. Yeah. Very <laughs> <laughs> a solid yeah, spot. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so was, it was quite a sort of challenging situation on, on debut, I suppose. And then, yeah, I, I think I got 40 odd or something and sort of, I remember... Missed your 50 by 48. 48. 48. Yes, I know. Oh. I know. I think Classy got 100 in that game as well. Um, we had a, we had a good partnership, I think, to sort of get us out of a bit of trouble. And then, um, yeah, just to, to win and, and play in front of a full house at, at Paul was, was really special. So that's... Um, yeah, I've, I, it's the game that comes to mind, and I think from a performance-wise uh, as well, it's not the most I've scored, but I think it was definitely um, one of the harder conditions and, and one of the more uh, innings that I'm more proud of. And three very good catches in that game, if from uh, memory serves. Yeah, I was a bit under uh, fielding and uh, not having the gloves on, so yeah, I was just relieved that uh, I didn't drop any, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, that was, that was quite, a, quite an enjoyable experience in the field. I, I want to ask you about that because I know, like for instance, uh, for Alan, it's uh, it's very weird uh, when he plays cricket because uh, he's on the field. Uh, for you, when you are <laughs> uh, when you're playing and you're not wicket keeper, uh, is it strange? You don't have the gloves; they hit the ball to you. And actually, it's quite sore because uh, you've normally got that <laughs> lovely big set of mitts on. Is, is it strange? Does it take a bit of adjusting to? Um, to be honest, I, I, when I first got called up to the protest, obviously everyone knows Quinny's number one. Um, He's going to keep. So I was a little bit nervous because I knew if I play, I'm going to end up in the field. Um, sort of the first time that I did it. But to be honest with you, it's, it, it doesn't feel too much different. Um, the only thing I will say is you've got to concentrate a lot harder uh, because when you're standing standing behind the stumps, you sort of forced to be switched on every ball. So um, it's, it's a bit easier to stay in the game. But I think sometimes in the field, you sort of find yourself drifting. There's not much going on where you're fielding at that time. And yeah, the real challenge is just uh, exactly staying switched on. Um, so yeah, that's that's for me the, the the biggest challenge. But the actual fielding and stuff, um, surprisingly, no, it's, it's it's all right. It all works out. All right, uh, we've got a uh, we've got a, a couple of quizzes to send your way uh, before we kick off the first one. Uh, any uh, any last queries there, Mister Committee? I just, I guess, I, I want to know what happens between now and and T Twenty World Cup. Uh, what are the plans? You're back home, nice little rest after the tour. Uh, what lies ahead for for you and the team? Yeah, well, I think it's just been the, just been finalised. Now we've got a trip to Sri Lanka. Um, I think for two or three weeks in September. Um, so yeah, just for the rest of August is just about sort of recouping. Um, yeah, resting as much as possible, and then just making sure we're ready for that trip, and then. Yeah, personally, I, I don't see myself being involved too much uh, in the T20s and to the World Cup. So, not too sure what the plans are, are after the Sri Lanka trip. But I imagine, um, yeah, there'll be a lot of emphasis uh, focused on the T20 guys and and their preparation. So, yeah, that's sort of sort of the next uh, couple of months um, and for me going forward. Yeah. Do I need to get Rusty onto a video to keep you in the T20 squad? I mean, I can do that as well. You, he's got a list of things he's got to make a video about, so you just need to say the word, essentially. Yeah, I think uh, he got the green light from me. You can go ahead with that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put him on top. He's very oh. persuasive. <laughs> there will be five-day test matches you play in, Kyle. It will be shorter than the video, Rusty or Rusty. <laughs> yes, right. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, we've got, uh, we got the quizzes. Um, a little bit of background on this. It's five questions. Uh, we have mixed results. I think Dean Elgar got three out of five uh, last week. Uh, we've had some dire performances. I think uh, JP dumany has got one out of five. Alan Lamb got one out of five. <laughs> Uh, Darren Goff got four and Scotty Cyrus got four. So all a mixed bag. Are you ready for the two full tosses big cricket quiz, Carl? I'm a bit nervous now, but let's go for it. All right. Specially selected just for you. And this week, every single one is pictorial. We've decided we'll, uh, we'll go nice and visual. So I've got five cricketers. I'm going to see if you can work out who they are. You, you might pick up on something of a theme as these five unfold. Uh, let's see if you do notice it. Uh, so here we go. Here's your very first nice, simple one to start with. Uh, who is that? <laughs> Johnny Bairstow. I think I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice, easy one for you. Let's go back in time a little. Question number two. Uh, who is this ferocious fast bowler? 
Ooh, no, that's uh, it's an Australian. <laughs> However, did you work that out, Kyle? You child <laughs> of me, you. Other than the I've got no idea. Outfit, yeah. Surely the half acre of sunscreen gives it away. Oh no, jeez, that's. I think that's probably before I was born. Now, that kid, when's that from? Nineteen ninety. I don't know. That's I don't know. Late nineties. Late nineties. Uh, a man that both uh, both Alan and I remember fondly. That's the great Australian fast bowler, Craig McDermott. Ah, oh, no, I would never have got that. <laughs> All right, he was a terrific player, being Australian notwithstanding. Okay, one from two, solid start. Uh, let's go on to number three. Uh, who is this player? That's a nice ah, one. Martin Guptill. Martin Guptill. All right. Okay, let's yeah. go to question number four. Who is this, Kyle? That looks like me in the backyard a couple of years ago. She's <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got no idea. No idea. That, believe it or not, is a young Sean Pollock. Oh, I should have just gone with that. <laughs> it's amazing, it's, it? yeah, it's like the trousers the being slightly too tight that should have given it sure. away, really. Oh, oh, it's, like that one. it's amazing. <laughs> All oh. right, you're two from four. This determines a pass or a fail. Your final question here, Kyle. I'd like to know who this is. Proudly supporting... His beloved Auckland Warriors. Who is My this? Word. No, that's I'm lost. I'm lost. Any <laughs> difference? Do you know? Last chance. Wild guess. Goes on to play some. Cricket. I want to. I want to say uh, Richie McCaw. I don't know. If that's possible though. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's, it's it's out the box, just out the wrong box, I'm afraid, because <laughs> of natural thinking. He's a, a young Kiwi who went on to play for England, Kyle. Guy by the uh, name. Ben Stokes. Ben Stokes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he's got a lot of hair there. That's why I didn't recognize him. A lot of hair. <laughs> yeah, oh. but a jersey, an oversized jersey. <laughs> oh. oh, there we go. Slight mm, trick mm, question mm. to... Uh, uh, to finish off with, I, uh, I see a couple of people watching there. Uh, Selwyn Eagle, uh, the uh, highly speculative and FBI monitored businessman out of Cape Town. Uh, he was part of the Jacques Cullis Foundation, says Selwyn. Yes. He was indeed. Good to have you watching, Selwyn. Uh, and then David Brook, the midlife crisis struck commercial manager at the Cobras, who's on his fourth CrossFit session of the day. When Craig <laughs> <laughs> I was born, makes me feel old exactly. uh, <laughs> all right he used, to, he used to work with me years ago in the media world did david lovely lovely guy all right uh we'll give you uh three uh no two do we give him that last one I, I yeah. think we'll, give you half. we'll give you a half you need a half so we'll give you two and a half out of five uh, which, uh 50 that's 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 a good job that's very that's wine good. Good. 50 well, percent well, it's, it's, a, it's double the South African matric pass rate, so I think you're okay. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get the sensible stuff from me, Kyle. Uh, you get the nonsensical from my co-host. I've got no I'll, idea I'll what's come up. up. And I, I'm a bit worried because, as you can see from the beard <laughs> and the, the look it gives him, he's actually starring in a Steve Hoffmeyer biopic. Uh, that's coming out later this year, uh, which is slightly disconcerting, but we forgive him for it because we love him dearly. Alan Committee, over to you. Right, Kyle. Uh, I want you now to just stop thinking. I want you to imagine you're Herschel Gibbs. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to do quick fire questions. Uh, no thinking. You just give the answer instinctively, as I know you're an instinctive player. This should be easy. Right up your alley. And uh, not that we're talking alley. So for you, bar one or Kit Kat, nice, easy one. Go for it. Kit Kat. Kit Kat, quite right. Two breaststroke. Or a backstroke? Backstroke. I'm sure. I don't know if we're talking <laughs> about this, thing, but I like it. All right. Uh, who had the better beard, Hashim Amla or Moeen Ali? Hash. Not even a question, sir. Well done. Uh, who was the better wicketkeeper, uh, Gilchrist or Sangakara? Uh, Gilchrist. Ooh, controversial. Mm. Ooh, okay. I like it. A straight drive or a drive through midwicket? An on drive through midwicket. Straight drive. For you straight or drive. A one handed catch, much like we saw Quinny take moments ago, or a run out from cover, uh, from a point with only one stump to aim at? Uh, run out from point. 
That's it. Spectacular. You want to go for the spectacle? I like it. Coming up, a big series starts. Who's going to win? England or India? England. Mm. Oh, God. You've well, just suddenly got very... <laughs> um, yes. turned on. Cricket commentators, who's better, Nasser Hussain or Mike Atherton? Uh, Nasser Hussain. Yes, sir. I agree. Mm. I agree. No, no. Yes, yes, They're pretty it's on far, though, to be honest. It's, it's close. It's very close, but uh, it's, it's not. very close. On. Not close uh, at all. It's, it's brilliant. It's mm. insane rubbish. You know. own quiz. Oh, you've got your own quiz. Now stay with your own quiz. <laughs> right. um, De Chambro or Brooks Kepka? Oh, Kepka. Ooh, yes. Very good. Okay. And then finally, <laughs> this, is, this is a tricky one. If you had to choose... Biting another player or kicking them illegally? Kicking them illegally, definitely. Oh, both not so be, Isn't that wonderful? I want to be weird. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. Like your answers, like you. Good man. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Nicely done there, Mr. Committee. Carl, just before we let you go, uh, we know that there is much to look forward to this year. you got the uh, the T20s. Where do you see uh, the the main direction? Is this Carl the one day, Carl the T20, Carl the test player, or is it going to be possible in this crazy cricketing schedule to try and somehow string all three of them together? Uh, honest answer is I'd love to. I'd love to end up being an all-format player. Um, that's obviously the goal. Uh, that's what I wanted. That's what I want to do. Uh, that's what I'm working towards. Um, but yeah, it is quite a difficult ask. I think at the moment, um, I'm a. I believe I'm a purist, and for me, for me, Test cricket is the ultimate. So, at the moment, um, yeah, I want to put as much focus as I can on the longer format. Um, 50 overs is quite important to me. Um, obviously, uh, my goal is the the 2023 World Cup. So. Yeah, 50 overs and, and uh, Red Bull stuff at the moment. Um, but yeah, with a, with a long-term goal of, of hopefully uh, one day being involved in all three. And the 1,000. You know, I was uh, going to say, yeah, we've yeah. got a new player for the 1,000. I can see <laughs> you, Kyle, just going out, just dead batting the first 200 deliveries, getting oh, yeah. your 8 not out off to 261 balls. I, I can right. see you doing this. This, this is your future. Uh, that'll be a bit uh, bit challenging, but uh, why not? <laughs> oh, dear. Carl, it's an absolute delight to have you on the show, as it is an absolute delight to watch you play cricket in any format, particularly the 1,000. Uh, enjoy the break. Enjoy the rest. Enjoy the cricket that comes up. I hope we see a bit of you in the T20s, because I think you'd be a very valuable asset, uh, but also that World Cup. And, uh, of course, what is there not to look forward to as a South African for a Cricket World Cup? Because they always go so well <laughs> Kyle thank you so much for being part of the show enjoy the rest of the evening and we look forward to having cool. you back on soon much appreciated cool thanks for having me cheers cheers oh, there what we go guy. who knew oh. a ginger could be so lovely oh he's fabulous absolutely fat and what a cricketer and what i love about him and he, he reminds me in some ways of a uh, oh, well. C in that he yeah. has the ability because i've seen him do it he can go and set up an end and just bore you to death if he needs to and three That's days awesome. later he's playing in a t20 game and he's scoring 600 off nine balls and causing absolute havoc and that that is a multi-talented cricketer multi-dimensional i think is the phrase you're looking for sir a tremendous talent we love him well done him Indeed. Now, listen, quick question here from Tace Brits. Where is Johan van der Volt? Uh, Johan van der Volt, of course, uh, is undergoing some uh, massive dental work at the moment. Uh, as you know, his teeth are so big, he doesn't use uh, dental floss. He uses a skipping rope. And uh, they're actually getting a construction company in. They're doing some work on him. He will return, much like a vaunted James Bond. He will be back, uh, 003 and a half. But when that will be, uh, one cannot tell right now. In the meantime, this beard is uh, in lieu of Johan van der Volt, a magnificent beard. And there we go. We have our Alistair Dermany Gingers Rock Allen Committee. Uh, they <laughs> come to, uh, I see a little earlier our Greek test cricket specialist, Michelle Kavarnos. 
uh, saying, yay, cricket, K, bye, as usual. We've got no idea what she's on about, uh, but uh, it's always nice to have 12-year-olds watching the show. Uh, right, a big thank you to David Brook, uh, the head of CrossFit and commercial management and cool stuff at the Cobras uh, for assisting with the CV show. And a big thank you uh, to Kyle. Uh, for, uh, wonderful guest. And our very favorite ginger on two full tosses, uh, which holds us off. Uh, uh, we are going to be taking a break of next week. I think we're probably back next week, uh, but we will confirm that in the next day or two uh, via fax. So sit next to your machine. Uh, but we've got a lot of very exciting stuff planned for the summer, and we cannot wait to have all of you along for the ride. So big thank you to everybody. Uh, Alan, uh, thank you. Sparkling form as always tonight. And uh, uh, do we uh, do we see you anywhere? Are you on stage? Are you uh, performing? Are you at a traffic light? Uh, not for the moment. In rehearsals, a little bit of TV work coming up as well, which is unusual and interesting for me. Looking forward to that. But a Joburg, Monte Cassino, uh, looks like October is the dates for Apocalypse now. So a couple of months still to go, but something to start looking forward to. I'll keep you guys posted. And if indeed we not, aren't here next week, then when we do come back, as you say, for what is effectively our season two, Dan, a season two. <laughs> We've been renewed. <laughs> We've been renewed by ourselves. What a <laughs> tremendous coup that is. And I think we're, I mean, is that the time to bring Kevin Peterson? I suppose that is the question all oh. the listeners and viewers have been asking. I don't hey. think but eight knows? WhatsApps from KP. I'm looking at my phone now. Eight WhatsApps yeah. since the show started uh, trying Definitely. to get on. Uh, but listen, he's not bad, but he's no Lee Barnard. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wrapping us up there. Taste Brits. Shout out to our Proteus ladies too. Rocking the 100. They yes. certainly are, except we don't watch the 100 and we never will. So we wouldn't know. To Taste, to everybody else who's been watching, thank you very much. We'll see you back again soon. From myself, Dan Nicol, and from Alan Committee, two full tosses proudly presented by The Thousand, the new cricket show that's set to rock the cricket world, or at least put it gently to sleep. Goodbye. Goodbye.